welcome to The One Inside, an internal family systems podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Sollenberger. I'm excited that you and all of your parts have taken time to be with me and all of my parts. If you are a coach, a client, a therapist, if you are in business or education, and you're curious about the IFS model, you are in the right place. Now, let's see what happens on today's podcast. Hey everyone, today is just me. (laughs) Next week I'll be publishing two podcasts, one with Derek Scott about grief, that will be published Tuesday, and then on Friday, as normal, I will publish a podcast with Rebecca Ching. Rebecca and I talk about um, a lot of Brene Brown. She is a certified in the daring way, and we talk about the unburdened leader. Um, she's great, and get your get your pen and paper ready because I feel like the whole time we were talking, I was just staring at her. Like everything she says is just. Um, so good. So I can't wait to give that to you. So that's going to be next week. So for today, I actually just wanted to get on here because I was incredibly moved by the webinar that the IFS Institute put out last week. So they've been putting out weekly webinars. And if you've been following me on the Facebook One Inside page, I've been putting up links. So the one that they did this past week, and Cinco did on grief and um, polarization. So she talked about grief, she talked, and then we did a meditation, and then she talked, did a polarization exercise, which was incredible and super, super powerful. But I'm just going to be talking about the grief portion. So if you go over to YouTube or the IFS Institute Facebook page, you can find that video. I also put a link up on the show notes to find the video. So what I thought was so interesting is that, so Derek and I are going to be talking about grief, but it's in a different way. And I think there's going to be more, obviously there's going to be more conversations over the next few weeks or months. And probably you guys are already having these conversations about grief and loss at this time. The conversation Derek and I have is very different. So I thought that I wanted to talk about what Anne talks about in the webinar. So one of the things that she just does at first, these webinars are live. And so she asked people just to start um, typing in their losses and this idea that we all have this, these shared losses and these collective losses, unlike any other time in history. And there are parts of me that just began to cry as I heard all these people talking about their losses and was thinking about my own losses. So I found that naming the losses out loud to myself self and writing them down. So I had my journal out and was writing the whole time and that felt really powerful. So to, to name losses, so losses for me. So this is what, this is what I want to do today is I want to just talk briefly about what she talks about. I'm not going to reteach it. I'm just going to talk about it and I'm going to talk about my responses to it. So that's, that's the plan. We talked about losses and she talked about naming losses. So losses that were coming up for me were my office. I love my office and I can still go there, but just with schooling my son and I just need to be home obviously so my office routine structure any alone time um, those all feel like really big losses and the other loss that I hadn't really thought about was that just the loss of going to my son's school because I would help out in the classroom and be with his his fr- be with him be with his friends and be with him in that environment and that feels like a loss too I think those losses are going to intensify as summer comes and we have two family trips that we probably aren't going to be able to go on. And um, I talked to my grandmother, all of our families in Maryland, and I talked to my grandmother and she always says, when are you coming into town? And so she said that and I was like, um, now my grandmother is actually still going to Walmart. I don't understand that, but she's from Baltimore City and... She's going to do whatever she wants to do. So I was like, uh, we're not going to be coming into town anytime soon. So I don't think I've felt that yet, but that was just, uh, it was kind of funny. Anne asked us to think about our reactions to that first week. And so many people talked about denial and she talks about how, how that denial shows up. So denial for me showed up is, um, 
I had a noonday party. I don't know if you guys know about noonday, but noonday is like a jewelry party. It's like I always compare these parties to like Tupperware parties back in the day. So it's like a Tupperware party, but with jewelry that is made from women from around the world. And so um, one of my favorite noonday stories is that women that collect old gun shells and then make jewelry out of them. And then people from women from all over the world buy this jewelry and it goes back to help the village and stuff. So they have amazing stories. But so right, right after when all this start, started, I had a noonday party and one of my friends actually came with a mask and we were like, I mean, no one made fun of her because she's lovely, but it was a little bit like, what? Like that's, there was this idea of like, ha ha, we're not going to get to that point and ha ha. Like I always, I kept thinking, we'll still be able to gather in groups of less than 10. Like I'll still be able to have my book club and uh, yeah, just denial, right? So, but I'm glad I had that noonday party, but lots of denial about um, my work and how it's going to impact that. And I could still see clients just, you know, six feet apart. I'll just move the chairs a little bit farther back. And obviously this, the denial about sickness, like it won't happen to me, won't happen to my family. And I'm noticing as as she was talking about this, I noticed, yeah, part of me uses humor and that comes up with Derek too, um, uses a lot of humor and sarcasm there was also a part of me that felt some excitement of like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Like, I wonder what's going to happen. Um, but right, complete denial. And then she asks, how has that changed over the past six weeks? And then, you know, the stages of grief, the first one is anger. And then the next one is anger. The first one is denial. Sorry. The first one's denial. And the next one is anger. And I was like, yeah, I remember there was a week where I was so angry. And you guys, I didn't didn't even dawn on me that I was working through the stages of grief in this way until she talked about it. Like I've been talking about grief with Derek about losses and there's been sort of this idea of, yeah, where there's losses, but it didn't dawn on me that we've actually, that I've actually been moving through these stages of grief the whole time. I don't know. Sometimes it's, it didn't dawn on me. So until I listened to the webinar. So then this one week, I remember I was feeling so angry. And what happens for me when I get ang- angry about anything is I tend to blame my husband. So this reminds me of that Brene Brown. Speaking of Brene Brown, there's a funny video where she's someone has drawn her like a cartoon and her voice is imposed on it. And she talks about how she breaks a mug and how she blames her husband. And I've, that is me, you guys don't tell him, but that is me. And so I remember that week I was so angry at him. And of course, I don't think he probably, well, he probably did something, but he didn't really even do anything. And I realize now that it's like, right, that's what I tend to do when I think I get angry or things feel out of control as I tend to blame him. So I didn't realize that until again, until this webinar. So uh, denial, and then over the past six weeks, thinking of anger and how that anger has shown up. Then after we go through anger, the next stage is bargaining. How did my parts start to bargain? Um, And I know that one of the things that I did work-wise was I was like, I'll do half online. Other therapists were going all online. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do half online, half in person. Um, one of my friends is pregnant and is due in June. And we're like, it's all going to be over by June. You know, we're all going to be fine. Um, but there was this bargaining. The other thing that I did bargaining-wise, and it was fun to listen to the webinar because other people were chiming in and that gave me other ideas on how I was bargaining. And so one of the other bargaining things that I did was we would, my son and I love to go out and we go hiking and we'd like to be outside. And one thing that has come up a lot for me is I'm just so glad it's not in the air. Like we can go outside and just be outside. And I'm so glad that's where it's not in the air. I'm not sure if that's bargaining or not, but that's one of the things that thought that I thought of. Um, the next stage is sadness, despair, and depression. And what was so interesting about this is she started talking about that and talking about, and other people were chiming in on their reactions to that. I noticed a part of me was completely numb. I felt nothing. I wrote nothing down. I started, I have a little ADD, so I started working on a puzzle, started kind of doing other things. And then I remembered last night or the night before I listened to the webinar, I was listening to a fiction book 
and I started sobbing. I'm laying in bed with my son. He's reading and I'm reading and I started sobbing. I mean, there was something sad that happened in the book, but nothing that warranted me sobbing. And I was like, and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, it's this book. It's sad. And so we had this conversation about when we read sad things and it was fine. And I felt this release and I realized, oh, okay, it's like parts of me are not, I'm not there yet. I think I'm probably still somewhere in the bargaining because parts of me are not letting me feel this sadness and feel this despair. Um, it's coming out in other, with other ways. Another way that I think that I'm kind of stuck there is it's coming out in my dreams. I'm having the weirdest, wackiest dreams and I'm having a lot of hip and jaw pain. So I think it's also happening in my body. So I'm doing lots of yoga because some days my jaw is really, really tight. Um, so <laughs> that's where I'm at. I'm stuck there. I'm stuck between bargaining and sadness, despair, and depressed. And then the other thing that was interesting is she asked us to check into our bodies right then. And I was like, that's when I realized, wow, okay. Didn't even realize what was happening until I checked in with my body as she was walking us through these stages. Um, The last stage, as you probably know, is acceptance. And I'm not there (laughs) at all. And I'm not really sure what that looks like. Um, But that is the last stage. She also talked about this this extra added stage, which Derek actually talks about when – in our podcast that we do next week about meaning and how we make meaning. And um, that's one thing that I think I have been thinking about and people have been talking about is what are the meaning, what's the meaning I'm making from these losses or the changes? I think that's one thing that's happening for me is I'm making meaning like there are some lessons that I need to be learning in changing dynamics for my family, which I've talked about a little bit. And I think those are really good good lessons for me. And also like, what's God teaching me through this? What is God teaching me about myself, about my parts, about slowing down? I'm reading this book, Soul Talk, and he talks about the addiction to hurry and addiction to busyness. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's parts of me. There's a part of me. Part of me is addiction, addicted to all that busy, busy, busy. So um, yeah, it's nice. I think that's the other thing that the meaning is meaning that's coming up for me is, is the space, space to have a little more quiet and have a little more awareness. I mean, I think a part of me obviously knew that, but just as I'm experiencing it in a different way. So that's, that's my experience. Anne ends up, she stops that kind of teaching portion there and leads us into an incredible meditation and does a really interesting polarization exercise. Um, and one of the things that happened for me is I think that my manager parts really loved like taking notes and kind of dropping in a little bit. And so that I was primed for the meditation. And then when we did the polarization exercise um, and exile popped up really, really quickly. And I was able to do a piece of work. It was really, I'm like, it was really beautiful. It was really, it was really meaningful. I'll say it that way. It was really meaningful to me. So I thank Anne for that. And um, I encourage you to go check out that YouTube video. By impression is the IFS Institute are releasing these free videos for us once a week. So I highly recommend you check them out. The other thing I want you to know about, I want to uh, plug a couple of things before I let you go. One is that we're going to talk about it on Tuesday, but it's, I mean, that's kind of late. So Wednesday, next Wednesday, May 6th. On May 6th, um, from 2 to 5 Eastern Standard Time, Dick is going to be doing a workshop with Derek's organization about IFS and spirituality. So it is $95, which is a great price, from 2 to 5 on Wednesday. So if you go over to Derek's website, which is ifsca.ca, um, I also put a link there too. You can register for that and that's going to be next Wednesday. So I wanted you to know about that. And then the other thing I wanted you to know about is that um, there is another IFS podcast called IFS Talks and they just had Dick on and it was really good. It was really interesting because Dick talks about the origins of IFS. One of the things I thought was really interesting is he talks about um, what's happening now and future of IFS and where he's putting his energy. And I just thought it was really, really interesting, especially given the changes with IFS trainings going online and how that's making IFS more accessible. So check out 
and it's always just here nice to hear from Dick and what he's how he's doing. So um, check that out on IFS Talks. Um, so there you go. Okay, hope everybody's doing well, and you will hear from Derek and I on Tuesday, and then Rebecca and I on Friday. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for hanging out today. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe. And if you really like this episode, share it with a friend and leave a review. You can follow me on Instagram at IFS Tammy and join our community on Facebook at the One Inside Podcast. Talk to you next time.